Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout, joined by Ray Howe and Sam Brown. Now, as always, before we get to them, make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast and be sure to check out the latest NHL lines with online, online sports book Betway. So go check out Betway. Sam, Ray, how's it going there, guys? Fantastic. Yeah. Got to make some playoff hockey. We got the X by our name, maybe on the wrong side, but we do have the X by our name. It's a great By the game. time this comes out, it'll be on the right side. Maybe, but I'll probably <laughs> put it on the correct side. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't look at our Twitter profile too hard unless you've already screenshotted and then, you know, hold it against us until then. Then shame Angus for it. Just, yeah. just me. You don't have to shame Sam or Ray for that. They would have made the correct choices there. But <laughs> I looked at the app and I looked at what the the map said and i said you know what we're gonna put the x after jets nation so i'm still right uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we get the vegas golden knights coming up ne- uh this week round one how are we feeling about the jets going into that i mean if you're gonna pick a team in the west to play against maybe other than seattle i think vegas is the one like i know they came technically came first in the west but I just I don't think they stack up as well against the Jets as most teams do. Yeah, I I think with that being said, with the goalies as well, I think that's going to be really important. The difference is like I feel like Vegas is kind of weak on the goalies or like one of the weakest for a playoff team in the West. So I feel like that's definitely going to be a major cause in kind of deciding this series. And it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting series to be because it might be. Vegas having a more complete lineup and kind of having that experience, but I feel like the Jets really match up well against them. Well, you got like uh, Stone coming back, but he's coming off of a back surgery. He hasn't played a game in God knows how long. It's miraculously timed recovery. <laughs> Crazy, right? But wow. I, I don't know if we're going to see a Kucherov come back like you know we saw a few years ago. I think it's like we got Stone coming in kind of meh. So is I mean, he supposed to be ready for game one? I believe so. I believe so. I could be wrong, but I like mostly certain he's good to go for game one. Um, what happened to the rest of the um Vegas Golden Knights goaltending? Like, is everyone hurt? Because I thought like Jonathan Quick was this, you know, coming back Quick's, and Quick's terrible. Yeah, well, numbers I'm, are horrid. I, I but I thought he came into Vegas and he was just guns blazing. As he, he won was, like his first two games, and I think it yeah. kind of fell apart. That was that? that okay? Yeah, like the goalies in Vegas, like they have Logan Thompson, who was basically their starter this year, but he's also going to be out for the entire first round, or he's not going to be a major factor in playing in the first round. And then they also have Aiden Hill, who's also injured. So they and they have Robin Leonard. So they have like five capable NHL goalies on their team that if all were healthy, they could all be playing in the NHL. So I think with how the injuries shake up, I feel like it's really important for the Jets to capitalize on the lack of goaltending with Vegas. I wonder if the Jets, like a good portion of the team having played with Brassois before is going to help the Jets because they kind of know his tendencies and, and know what he's doing. Like, I wonder how much, uh, Flaherty and Hellebuck have been coaching up the team being like, Hey, these, this is what Brassois needs to work on and stuff like that. Like, I, I think that could be a massive, massive advantage as well on top of already having like a huge, huge advantage yeah. in that. This is yeah, also- uh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to, I was just going to add, um, Brassois is actually undefeated this season right now after coming back from surgery. So and I was watching the Las Vegas game to just kind of see who would be playing. And they were saying in that broadcast that uh, after coming back from his like long-term injury that he was facing, he has felt more like like a like more ability than he's had in a while. So I feel like he's playing at the best of his game right now. So it may be Brassois who was on our team for a long while, and we may know, but this may be a different Brassois than we're used to seeing. Yeah, could be could be just a, a completely different. I mean, that was a few years ago, and obviously a, a major injury and surgery ago. So you never know exactly what's going to happen. So I do think uh, the Jets goalie coach, though Flaherty, is going to be a big part of that. Just kind of coaching up the guys. Yeah, uh, looking at their forward group, this is Eichel's first seven game series ever. Like the guy was NCAA, so you know, like Vegas has got a little bit of in 
inexperience going in into, into their top lines. I feel like that's a bit of a wild card. You don't know how Eichel is going to react to that. Because, I mean, he's what now, uh, 2015 he was drafted. So he's eight years into his NHL career, and this is his first playoff game. He might be squeezing the stick a little tighter this week. Yeah, well, if you look at like uh, Jordan Eberle's and Ryan Nugent Hopkins' first run at the playoffs in 2017, those boys just couldn't do anything, and they got run out of Edmonton. Obviously, it might be different with Vegas. They also might run Eichel out of Vegas for that. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's probably going to be squeezing the stick a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm liking the Jets' odds. It's just I wonder if Laurent Brassois is going to be like, see, I told you you guys should have played me a little bit more. I told you. I was going to I don't think him. he has any ill will towards the Jets. No, but like, didn't yeah, he, he didn't get a ton time. of games, but he got paid after he left the Jets. Sure did. So I, I don't I think he stepped up his game to another level while he was here. And that has really like springboarded his career in a sense. Mm-hmm. They also for a while had Michael Hutchinson, but he's not not around anymore. <laughs> Hutch. Um yeah. Like, and it, like you look at what the Jets' X factors are going to be. Like, the third line, like, does Vegas's third line of like really hold up towards the Jets? Like, Adam Larry's probably got the biggest job going into the series, would he not? Or one of the biggest well, jobs. You, you've got to figure Lowry's going to be stacked up against the other team's top line quite a bit as well. Like, yeah. the way that third line's been playing recently, I mean, Nino, Lowry, and Appleton have been clicking. So, you got to figure they're going to uh, see quite a bit of ice time. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely like a great kind of situation to be in where you basically have three lines where you can be confident in putting out any line against that top line and seeing good results. So I feel like it's going to be definitely advantageous to have Lowry match up against the Eiffel line because then you have two top lines that can repeatedly go at their bottom lines and you're just going to eventually have to find some offense from that with just a pure amount of chances they should be able to generate. I'm just checking out daily face off. Uh... I was just looking at their oh, lines as well. So beautiful. we've got, I straight up don't know how to say this guy's name. Pavel Dorofeyev. Yeah. He's their top line left wing. Apparently uh, Eichel right and Marsha show. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Mark Stone is going to slot somewhere in here. He's not on this right now. Then Mike uh, Amadio, William Carlson, Riley Smith, Ivan Barbashev, Chandler Stevenson, Phil Kessel, Brett Howden, Nicholas Roy, and Keegan Colsar. So, I mean... The third I line matchups are interesting, I'd put, actually. I'd put our forwards up against theirs any day of the week. Like, I know they've got the big names in Eichel, in uh, Stone once he's back, and in Kessel. But, like, just the way that our forwards have been playing in the last month or so, like, the top line of of Shifley, Connor, and uh, Dubois, like, who on their team is stopping that line if they start rolling? Yeah, but I'm also a little bit worried, like, what what version of Blake Wheeler are we going to see? Like, I know we've seen a really good version of Blake lately, but... Like, how long does he have this stretch for? I'd Like, I want to think that he's going to go all the way, but you got to remember, like, the dude's 36, but I guess we've also seen Joel Pavelski just turn it up at 38. So maybe there's that too. Pavelski is also, a, like, freak of nature athletically. Yeah. Like he's, and not saying that Wheeler isn't. I'm just saying Pavelski's on, like, another level. He's, can like... Just the his hand-eye, his the game he plays isn't quite as, like... Wheeler was such a power forward and like, yeah, he was also a playmaker with the passing, but he he played a big, strong game that I know Pavelski has that, but it's not exactly like the same game that they've played. So I think Pavelski's kind of translates a bit more into as you're getting older, if you're, you don't really have to play quite as heavy as Wheeler, who it's more noticeable with that. Doesn't Pavelski sit in front of the net though and like just clean up garbage and tip a lot? He can tip anything it's insane yeah so but i mean like you got to hang out in that area where you're taking an absolute punishment as well so i don't know i i'd like to believe that we got uh, we got some sort of old man magic that's gonna come up for blake wheeler uh speaking of wheeler who do you guys think is the like if if the jets end up going to the final dance and end up winning it 
who are like the Jets really playing for? Like, who is the, like that guy in their room where it's like, yeah, we got to win this for. Wheeler is probably up there. I think it has to be for Hellebuck with the amount of just kind of bailing out that he's done and kind of making this team a competitive team and winning a Vesna trophy. Like without Hellebuck, we're in contention for the lottery. So, and for the amount of years he has been able to bring this team to playoff glory and just kind of bringing us to a situation where we have a chance to win the Stanley Cup, I feel like it's on the team to kind of bring that to him and kind of be like, hey, we know how important you are to our team. You're our Con Smythe kind of winner there if he gets the chance. Yeah, I I, I definitely feel that. Um, but I, yeah, in that sense, I'll also say like a guy like a Schmidt who's played a long time in the league. And, and I, I think this first series, uh, well, of course they're playing for like the core that's been around forever, who hasn't really done anything other than 2018, but also Schmidt, this is his former team who kind of discarded him uh, to towards the end of his time there. So I think he'll probably want to uh, get some revenge on those guys as well. That's fair, man. I really hope Nate Schmidt really turns it on. Cause like he's been going a lot, like since he got benched that one game, but, uh, or not benched, but uh, put in the presser. Uh, so I'm really hoping that we get another gear out of Nate Schmidt. Uh, that, that was a great move by bones though. And Schmidt has even said it. He's like, I, I just needed that like kind of game to figure it out and, and really like turn my game around, which is, it's obviously been working. Uh, if the Jets end up losing a defenseman, who is going in? Probably Stanley, you'd have to imagine. You would, you'd think Stanley over Capobianco? Probably. I, I think it also depends on the defenseman that goes out. Like, if you lose a guy like Brendan Dillon, Stanley's the one that comes in 100%. Even, like, a Samberg. You want six foot seven worth of Charmin playing on your back end if Dillon goes out? I don't think he's as soft yeah. as you always say. But um, I, I just, like, yeah, I, I think if you lose a guy like, God forbid, Josh Morrissey, Copa Bianco brings a little more offense to the table than Stanley would, which is kind of what you need in that position. So, I, I don't know. It'll be... Hopefully, let's just not consider that at all. Let's have a nice, healthy, everyone has fun and win some hockey games. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to say the worst case scenario is going to happen because it's not. This team's going to be good to go. I mean, am I a little bit worried after that Minnesota game when Josh Morrissey went down into the boards awkwardly and... I was worried about the Mestikov in the Colorado game when he crashed into the net. I don't, like... In a game that really didn't mean anything, you love to see a guy give heart, but you also want to see a guy stay healthy and not risk hurting him. So I was like, because, I mean, him at the second line center has really helped. Like him moving there really turned that second line around and has helped Wheeler and Ehlers do a lot more. So if we had lost him for any period of time, it would have been it would have been a big blow. Yeah. And I mean. Obviously, like, then you just have Shifley move back to center. It's not the end of the world, but the way the, the, like, the lines are set right now, I think has been perfect for the Jets. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, with the chemistry that we've been able to build and kind of have these three lines, like, I feel like with just one injury to any one of the top three lines, it's like, you're going to juggle the lines and it's going to be in a situation where, you got to break up from that chemistry and you got to kind of recreate chemistry like on the fly when the games matter most. So say Nemesikov goes down, Shifley slides down, then someone needs to come up to that first line and be able to not skip a beat and go in full on in like a game three situation. So any injury is going to be important. And even in the bottom six with the, with the PK, like someone like Stenlin or something like that, like those, like every single player on the team, has to pull their weight and every player on the team is going to be important in winning a series. A hundred percent. Like just sorry, my microphone just did some weird stuff. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I just think like I'm so happy we're not playing Minnesota first round. Yeah. I just I and I was listening to uh 32 thoughts on my drive back to Dolphin today. And uh, Fridge was saying that he talked to some players on the Jets and even they were saying like in that last game against Colorado, they were going so hard 
And it's because they didn't want to play Minnesota in the first round because yeah, you might beat them, but you're coming out of that black and blue. Like you're not coming out of that series, the same team win or lose because they're just such a rough, such a hard fighting team. Oh, like the jets, like played their hearts out just to make sure they didn't have to have seven games against Minnesota. No, the avalanche. Colorado. Oh, the yeah. avalanche. Cause, oh, they, cause okay. if they, if they hadn't won their last two games, they would have been, second in the division and they would have played Minnesota first round. Ugh. And I mean, you're already down Landis cog and, and guys are beat up towards the end of the season. Like that's a, that's a hard five, six, seven games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like Minnesota could take, like you could lose to Minnesota in four, but odds are they're going to push you to the limit. And man, I was really rooting for a Colorado to lose one of those games. Cause I desperately wanted to them to take on the wild. Cause that's the real, that's well, I mean, the then they'll just have to win the second round. Like the Jets, Edmonton is the team I'm most worried about right now in the West. I'm only worried about Edmonton if they beat LA. Yeah, (laughs) because if they don't, then we wouldn't have to play them. No, no, no. Well, obviously, (laughs) Uh, but like, (laughs) I'm only worried about Boston if we meet them in the finals, guys. (laughs) (laughs) But no, like Ed, like if like Edmonton and LA, that's the series that I'm. I think is going to be the best hockey that best pure hockey that you can watch that's going to be everyone going balls out because you got like la took edmonton to game seven last year now they've got dustin brown and kevin fiala well you know like what 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 is edmonton yeah and corpus allo so i mean it's like it's cool that the oilers have Stuart skinner playing so well and you know echo added to their lineup but I think LA could take it to the Oilers. It, it that could be a very good series. I just I, that's I also to, think. Oh, I was gonna say that going game go that goes to game seven, and basically it's a one game series. Yeah. I I do think that it's gonna be a little tighter for Edmonton in the playoffs. They scored so many power play goals this year. Like, um Eric Carlson had more even strength points than Connor McDavid. That's how good their power play was, but that's also how many power plays they got. And are they going to get that same opportunity in the playoffs when the refs put the whistles away way more often than they do in the regular season? Like Edmonton's massive, massive advantage over everyone is how dangerous their power play is. But if you're going from getting that four times a night to one or two, that's a lot less opportunities for a goal, even if you're still scoring one out of every three. Yeah, I think Edmonton, like the scary part is, is just with how good Connor McDavid was this year and it's kind of the team they have, three 100-point players, that doesn't come around often with capable goaltending and defense. Like, they just have a team that's very complete and kind of ready for going on a run, and they've, made, and they've seen it last year with just going to the conference final. So I feel like they're a team that's going in where they know they have the tools that they can succeed with, and even if they don't get the power play opportunities, you're still going to have the opportunity to split up Dreisaitl and McDavid. And it's going to be hard to cover. Like, And if they put Dreis or uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins on the third line, it's going to be hard to match up against them just with the pure center depth and kind of scoring threats they have. So it's going to be hard to face Edmonton regardless, mm-hmm. just based on how complete their team is. I don't know. You get out of their top four to, uh, off- offensive guys, and then what? You got Derek Ryan. Ooh, Mister Ten Goals in eighty some odd games. Like I don't know. They're bottom five forwards. I'm not really sold on them a whole lot. Like I think that's going to be the thing that sinks the Oilers. Yeah, depth could definitely be an issue for the Oilers down the stretch. But yeah. if I, not- I do still think their their top end, like the way they're playing right now, is just insane. So. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I don't, I think it'll also come down to Skinner, how he plays in the playoffs. That'll uh, dictate a lot. But I mean, we just got to worry about the Golden Knights for now. Get yeah, through that we do. round and you never know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm feeling like the 2012 LA Kings. Okay. I'm going to jump seed. us to a question I was going to have because it's relevant, but I'm also going to come back to this. Um, why do we not get more recognition to Dylan Sandberg for being a Calder candidate this year? Like that dude could genuinely play in the Jets top four. I firmly believe that. Uh, he could be top two. Yeah. Easy. Like, and like he, he nobody's going to vote be, for that I, guy and for I think, Calder. 
down the road he will be a he will be a a top line or or one a one b type of uh defenseman he's just so solid but unfortunately awards like that the norris the calder everything is just who scores the most yeah I, I, I know, yeah, like, you're never going to have a defensive is... defenseman win those awards. And there really should be a secondary. Like the, the Norris is just who scored the most goals as a, or who scored the most points as a defenseman. There should really be the same way. There's the um, drawing a blank, uh, the Selkie. defensive forward, the Selkie. There should also be a defensive defenseman award. Yeah. Oh yeah. I totally agree with that. I'm just like the Oil- Oilers nation was pushing for Stewart to get some Calder votes. And I'm like, hold on Stuart Skinner is good but he's got nothing on dylan sandberg obviously very different positions but I, I, like i would take a dylan sandberg on my team over a Stuart skinner to start i think i think sandberg being a scratch to start the season more often and also being kind of limited in minutes is going to affect that as well like he was he does when he was put in those spots like when guys got hurt and he was playing more minutes he was playing really well but he didn't consistently get those bigger minutes. So I don't think we're going to uh, see that recognition right now. And and I think there was a time where he and Perfetti were both up in that conversation, but it, other guys kind of set themselves apart from the pack a little bit more. Yeah. like I think the conversation of rookies died down once Perfetti was hurt with the Winnipeg Jets. I think had Perfetti stayed healthy, we would have been talking about Sandberg a lot more maybe he would have ended up with another five to 15 votes or points yeah. on how that goes. Yeah. I think the problem with Sandberg and like a lot of these rookies that do really good in their rookie seasons and kind of get unsung is just like, they don't, they're not necessarily getting the ice time or getting in a situation to succeed. So someone like the Nears who most likely wins the call there, he's on a, on a playoff team playing top six minutes with power play time. Like, not a lot of rookies in their first year are is going to get that. So like having that opportunity to have major minutes and even someone like San or not Sandberg, uh, Sanderson in Ottawa, like he had an insane year for Ottawa being one of their best defensive defensemen and putting up 40 plus points. Like it's just hard for a defenseman to win the Calder when there's so many forwards that can just get a top six role and just kind of run with it and kind of just get the award based off the points. Yeah, unless you're a guy like Kale McCarr who comes in and is just super offensive and gets those big minutes your first year, you're never really going to get that recognition for the Calder, at least. Yeah, I just wanted to complain because, you know, got to find something <laughs> to complain about right now. <laughs> Not much to complain about with this team, so let's bitch about the rest of the NHL. Okay, uh, going through the other playoff series, and we'll talk about something big uh, towards the end of the show that I meant to talk about earlier. Um, the, uh Seattle versus Colorado. How many games? I'm trying to remember what I, I put on my bracket. Uh, I'm going to say five games. I, I just, I, Nate McKinnon's on another level right now. He's he's uh, ready for playoffs. Not having Landis Cog hurts, but I, I do think, unless we get like a Grubauer revenge series, I do think it's... Uh, it's going to be Colorado in like five, maybe six. Could you imagine the reverse? Like, just like, oh man, that'd be sick. I'm into and it. It wasn't even like, it's not like they disregarded Grubauer. He won a cup there and was just like, eh, I'm going to go to Seattle. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he didn't even get the cup. Oh no, he, he left before the cup, right? Yeah. 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 Wait, wasn't he like just picked up off of, like, he was an expansion draft guy, wasn't he? Yeah. No. He's he, 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 no. He was he went UFA after his massive year of Colorado where he had like I think he was like in the Vesna conversation just based on how many wins he had. And then Seattle signed him. Oh right. It's still his own fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could have gone back to Colorado. Won a cup. <laughs> uh Dallas and Minnesota, how many games? Or wait, Ray, did you say how many games you thought for uh uh I, I think it's going to go seven games. Like, I feel like Seattle is definitely getting kind of underrated here just because of their first time in the playoffs. And I feel like the the answer would be different if Landis Gog and they had like a, like a completely healthy lineup, but Colorado's kind of banged up. I do think Colorado's going to come up on top, but I think it's not going to be like a cakewalk like everyone kind of thinks. 
I don't know what I put in my bracket because it wouldn't let me put in the games, and I just got frustrated, so I did a random bracket. So it definitely <laughs> may not be on my bracket, but for like if I if it actually worked, I'd say Colorado in seven games. Like it's definitely going to be a tight series, and like it could go either way based on. I feel like Gorgiev is definitely going to be the defining factor in that series. I also think a big uh, advantage for Colorado there is just the playoff experience. Um, because I feel like most of the guys on Seattle are pretty fresh. Like some guys have had some playoff experience, but even Eberly hasn't had that much. He's had he's gone to the Eastern Conference Finals twice. Once for sure. With the Islanders. With the Islanders. Oh, yeah. right. Either way, like, like I, I just think Colorado a good like the majority of their guys won the cup last year. I see. So and- they're like they're coming in hot and they they have that playoff experience, which is gonna help. I'm going with the dark horse, uh, Seattle in six, because I think just the leadership in that room is just like, we don't care. I think they're going to go into this a little bit like angry, but also loose. Like it, it's going to be a weird something that goes on. And ultimately the leadership in the Seattle room will win that series. That, that's where I'm going with that. Uh, Dallas, Minnesota. Ray, we'll start with you. Yeah. That series, if anyone doesn't say seven games, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> that is a that is the series that is just going seven games. And I don't even really want to pick who I think is going to win because I feel like it's like so closely matched up with just Dallas may be more complete with offense and having a better goaltending, but just how physical and kind of punishing Minnesota can be. If they get some like some massive kind of hits and kind of momentum swings, it could definitely go either way. But I think I have to go Dallas just based off on your alone. Yeah, I, I I agree. Seven games. I'm almost like if if Mark Andre Fleury does Mark Andre Fleury things, I could see Minnesota taking that series just because like he is it's what seventeen years in a row now that he's been in the playoffs. Like he's just so unbelievably good. Um, and he steps up in those big moments. So I could see Minnesota as well, but I think seven games and no one's walking out of that series alive. It's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much on the same boat with you there, Sam. It like it has to go seven games. If it doesn't, something's gone entirely wrong. But you have basically it comes down to Jake Ottinger versus Mark Andre Fleury, and Mark Andre Fleury has shown time after time. He is the goat when it comes to game sevens. So Mark Andre Fleury with them wild. Uh, where else are we? Got the Jets lined up. We've talked about them oil boys. Let's go to the East. Rangers and Jersey. That's uh that's gonna be a hell of a series. That's I'm I'm excited for that one. I'm I'm going to probably go with the Rangers just because they're top six is insane top like nine even their top nine and then i mean they've got fox truba miller on d like they're so good and who can forget shashirk and even on his down years that dude's a monster yeah i i think i think the blue shirts could do some damage this year so uh i'm gonna pick them in five the devils are really good they're really young though yeah. Um, and they're like going to be dangerous for a very long time, but I do think uh, this year is, it's New York. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go the opposite direction, actually. I think I'm going to go with New Jersey just based on they got Meyer at the at the deadline. And we all know Meyer based on the discussions we've had and just how he's handled himself in the playoffs for San Jose in the past. I feel like there's just so much that is kind of. Like it's going up against New York. Like they have a lot of, like they have, they're complete everywhere. Like they have a Norris winner. They have a Vesna caliber goalie and they got a, a great top nine, but just something inside me just keeps saying that like writing off New Jersey is not something you want to do in this playoffs. And they're just going to take that fire from just kind of being, it's, and it's a New York matchup too. So it's going to be there. It's going to be extra important for them to cement themselves in beating a team that made it to the Eastern Conference Final last year. I'm going with the Rangers just because history tells us rookies in the playoffs don't do fantastic. It's probably going to go six games, and 
it'll be a heavy six games, but yeah, I got to go with the blue shirts on this. I just like one. the additions. Both teams made unbelievable additions yep. at the dead, or the but, week before the deadline, but like Patty Kane, Vlad, um, Tarasenko, Tarasenko. I almost said the Mestikov. <laughs> um, I just like, I, I can't get over how good that, that Rangers top six yeah. and top nine are like Panarin and Zabinajad and, and Kreider had like 50 goals last year and no one's even, he's like their seventh best forward now. It's just insane. So I, I think that's just going to be a, a really great, I'm so excited for playoff hockey. <laughs> just thinking about this now. Oh my God. I can't believe the playoffs are here. Tuesday's coming fast. I can't wait. And well, we're, tomorrow we're, we got some hockey games yeah. too. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, also we got whiteouts coming up because who cares about the rest of the East? We all know about, actually that's a lie. I think. Uh, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll run through them quick. We'll, okay. We'll, uh, Florida, we'll Boston. Boston. In Boston. Okay. <laughs> I say Boston in five. See, four, I'm, like, I'm, I'm being a little silly with the four. I do think Florida could take a game at home, but Boston's just unbelievably see, good. And I, I like we've talked about historic teams so many times in the past, like that uh, Detroit game or uh, team in 2006 that the Oilers upset the Tampa series uh, a few years ago when they were the goats. Like, I just I think Paul Maurice is going to be squirrely and he's just going to be like, yeah, well, Derek. I think Boston's different. I and and maybe not, but. I just, they're so good and oh, they're yeah. getting Taylor Hall back now. And they're, they got Tyler Bertuzzi and of course, uh, Pasternak and Marchand and they're just unbelievable. If they, I think it comes down to their goaltending and yeah, their yeah. goaltending's just unbelievable this year. It's been so good. First team in history with a 40 win and a 20 win goaltender. Disgusting. Um, uh, Toronto, Tampa. Tampa. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to say Toronto, but this is, I, this is the make or break year for Toronto. So I think I have to say Toronto in seven, and they finally get it done. I, I, I agree. I do think this is the year Toronto finally gets over that hump before getting steamrolled by Boston. But I, I, I so badly want Tampa to win. Yeah, yeah. I, so that's another record. I think it would be funny to have to hand to Toronto. Here's most first round exits in a row in NHL history. I'm, <laughs> Toronto in five, Tampa in anything more than five. So, okay. I mean, like, that's what we've been saying about the Leafs for the last seven years and still nothing, so. But I, I yeah, think I the goaltending is so unbelievably important in the playoffs, and Vasilevsky just gives them that advantage. It's fair. But Tampa's played so much hockey the last three years, and eventually it's got to catch up to them. But I've been saying that for three years now, so uh, it's it's hard to doubt Tampa. Yeah, it's hard to doubt against a team that's made it to the cup final three years in a row so and one two you don't, against, <laughs> you don't bet against them no you really don't bet against pat maroon at this point that guy's been there four of the last years <laughs> uh also okay so uh, we were talking about a bracket a little bit earlier uh if you want to join us in on bracket uh visit our social medias uh go into the link in the bio uh we've got a an nhl draft so go join that i'll be posting it about it on our social media as well so you'll be able to see it but if you're listening to this and you just want to get in on it right away, uh, it's with the NHL app or website. Or yeah, it's, a, it's just an NHL bracket challenge. Yeah. We made a league. So Thank just you. the Jets Nation bracket challenge. Yes, that's it. So uh, yeah, Jets Nation bracket challenge. Look it up. Thank you, Sam, for setting that up. Uh, we'll get, yeah, more information. We'll, we'll, we'll give a shout out to whoever wins. We'll give you, actually, you'll yeah. get 20 bucks from, uh, I'll get $20 Tim Hortons gift card. So something are simple. We, are we, we just, allowed to do that? I am. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just saying I'm allowed to do it. I what are Lloyd's gonna do? Come for my eight dollars? Ooh, <laughs> nothing you can take from me, you dweebs. And uh, if you're a lawyer listening to this, I still think you're a piece of shit until you tell me otherwise. Um, shout out all of our lawyers that listen to this and now will not give me any free let's antagonize our our only <laughs> listeners. <Let's>... Our only <laughs> listeners. I don't think I don't think we have a lot of a lot of uh lawyer listeners here. Yeah, no, that's I, a, I I'm much shocked. Say. <laughs> no, I've shit talked all the lawyers on this podcast. I chase them away. Yeah, just one less viewer. One less viewer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The one guy. The one guy. 
Yeah, well, all to all, all six of our actual <laughs> listeners, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, shoot, um, that's pretty well all I've got. We've teed this bad boy up. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about here? Oh, actually, one last question before we go. Uh, Jets, uh, what's the series going to be at by the time we talk next Sunday? So three games in? Three games in, yeah. 2-1 Jets. I was going to say 2-1 Vegas. You three just think Hopkins? 3 nothing uh, Jets. No, I'm totally, <laughs> I want to say 3 nothing. Uh, I think Vegas, it, like the first two games are split, and then Winnipeg wins game one at home. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I am so excited to be going to those whiteout parties. I'll be there with uh, the radio stations. It's going to be a great nice. time. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm a member of the media. I built some arcade machines this week. I feel like a fancy boy. <laughs> and I gave it, and I got to see Kevin Hart for free. Thanks, City and Kiss. That's what I work for. I, I want to shout them out. They're doing good for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, before we go, uh, go Team Canada. I'm guessing the game is going to be over by the time people are listening to this. But playing the U.S. in the Women's World's gold medal game right now, the game's puck drops going any minute. So uh, go Team Canada. Go Team Canada. Uh, yeah. Where can we find you boys out on the internet? You going to specify I don't. Whatever Ray, one of you wants Ray, to talk about. Yeah, people find uh, yeah you can find you can find me at Brad Lambert is him or Ray Howe on Instagram. And yeah, let's hope for some long playoff run ahead. Yes, go follow Ray. <laughs> Sam. Yeah, yeah, it's uh Sam Brownell Radio on Instagram, S Brownell twelve on Twitter. Uh, seven thirty on your radio dial if you're anywhere in like Western Manitoba. As long as you're north of the city, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give me a follow, Angus Hout on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, also make sure you check out jetsnation.ca. I know we don't go there a lot, but uh, we're gonna get back into writing because uh, the new job is finally not as stressful as it once was. So that's fun. Um, and then also, yeah, Jets Nation, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, and Instagram. Whatever you know, you see us, follow us, all and subscribe to the all, podcast. Yeah. Every day. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to the podcast would be a great thing to do. Have yourself a fantastic week. Go Jets go. Hopefully we're talking about a three nothing series lead next Sunday. Peace out boys.